So hello again. Um, I would like to introduce you, uh, Jakob here. Uh, so thank you so much for being here today, Jakob. How are you doing? I'm good. Great. Thanks. Um, so I would first like to give the introduction about him. Um, so he is the job search expert who created the award-winning JobMob blog, one of the most popular job search blogs on earth with over 20 million visitors. Today, Jakob is going to speak about four things you should be doing every day of your job search. So yeah. Jakob, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much, Ravashi. Thank you for having me at this event. Um, just want to make sure that people know that they can ask questions. There, there will be some time for Q&A, but let's dive right into the presentation that I've prepared for you, which will be short and sweet. Um, four things that you should be doing every day of your job search. So let's go. I'm going to share with you something here. All right. So the first thing that you should be doing every day as part of your job search is research. Now, most people wait until they have a job interview before doing research about the company they're going to interview at, but that's far too late. And even, and even if they do it at all, it's, it's far too late. As you see here, I've written people, companies, and jobs. And I'm going to come back to show you my face here. There we go. People, companies, and jobs. And that's the order that matters. Why? Usually it's the opposite, right? You hear about a job, it interests you, you apply, you get an interview. And so, as I said, you, you do the research for the company before the interview when you're a little bit more under stress about what's going to be talked about in the interview. You should actually be doing it completely the other way around. In other words, you should be searching people, uh, people in your network, all right, uh, to see which companies they are at. In other words, which companies they may be able to refer you to internally. All right, that's where you should start doing your company research. You're looking for companies where you know people who can refer you internally. So first people in terms of companies. And then when you see that you have people who you know at certain companies that are relative to the industry that you're in, the tech industry, for example, then you can start looking if they have any jobs available, if there are any jobs that are relevant to you. And at that point, the people that you know there should be happy to refer you to those jobs that are relevant to you and relevant to them. In many companies, they encourage employees to bring on their friends or to bring on people that they know and trust. They have refer friend schemes. In Israel, that's called Haver Mavi Haver. It's a very well-known thing. It saves companies lots of money in recruiting costs. They encourage this. Then you should be taking advantage of this instead of just applying randomly to companies that don't know who you are uh, and if you're lucky enough to even get through, right? So. You should be doing your company research every day. You should be doing this kind of research every single day, looking at the people that you know and the companies that they know or they work for who can help you, uh, who are relevant to you and, and your job search. All right. That's the first thing you should be doing every single day. All right. Next, personal branding. So one of the things, personal branding is about reinforcing the ideas and impressions that people have about you. If you're a programmer, people should know you're a programmer. How do they know you're a programmer if they haven't worked with you? Well, perhaps that you have uh, contributed to an open source project, or perhaps you have a blog or a YouTube channel or somewhere uh, on the internet mainly, but not necessarily. It could also be in the real world, uh, perhaps the real world before and after the coronavirus, but the real world nonetheless. Uh, the idea will be that, yes, People will know your program because you're putting yourself out there. That's called building your personal brand so that when people know they need a programmer like you, they will think of you. And it's it's easy for, let's say you do this once, it's easy for people to forget because people were all overwhelmed with information all the time. But if you continue to put yourself out there, participate in the same forums again and again, people will start to recognize, okay, he, he or she is really an expert at this, that it'll, it'll be a lot easier for them to think of you. Uh, Another reason why it's really important to do some personal branding every day, right? Whether it's participating in a YouTube group, uh, you, uh, sorry, YouTube chat on your YouTube channel, whether it's answering comments on YouTube and in a Facebook group, in a LinkedIn group, wherever it is, somewhere where you are showing off your expertise is that it will keep your confidence up. Every single day that you're doing this, you will feel that you are helping people. You will be helping people. You will be sharing your expertise. You will stay current just by responding to people's questions and it will keep your confidence up. You will, you will, it, it's too easy when you're, when you're job searching on your own, especially nowadays where people tend to job search 100% online, it's too easy to, to be on your own, get lonely, start getting down because all you're doing is sending resumes, not getting responses. This way, if you are branding yourself every day, especially in an interactive way with people, 
you will see how people react. You will see people are recognizing you as an ex as an expert regularly, and that will keep your confidence up all the time. And that's why this is the second thing that you need to be doing every single day. You should be scheduling time for the company research that I mentioned a little bit earlier, and also for personal branding. Okay. Now, so we talked about company research, personal branding. What's the third thing that you should be doing every single day of your job search? That is exercise. Right now. Exercise, yes, exercise is super important. <laughs> Job search or not, you should be exercising every single day. But why is exercise really important, especially for job seekers? All right. So, of course, there are so many health benefits to exercising. I'm not here to tell you about that, but specifically for job search, when you're exercising, if you exercise at a local gym, it's a place to meet people and network with people and possibly learn about job jobs that are that are relevant to you. Especially if it's a gym that you know that people from your industry tend to go to. In other words, you could make an effort to go to a specific gym where people relevant to you go to. Okay, that's that's one thing as well. Um, another reason to exercise every day is that. The, you will just feel better. One of the, benefit, the health benefits of exercising is that the, the endorphins after a workout, you, you will feel better. You, you will also sleep better. You will de-stress by exercising. De-stress is such an important thing when you're on a job search. Too many people arrive finally in a job interview for a job that they applied for and that they are probably a good hire for, but they're so nervous in the interview. They're so stressed from the whole situation that they, they just bomb the interview. And it, it's sad because it's it's... It's a miss for you. It's a miss for the company because they're missing out on a big, on a good candidate who otherwise uh, they they would have loved to have. But interviews, it, they really are high stress because people have to make a first impression, a good first impression, and the companies don't have a lot of time to decide on whether or not you're you're the right candidate for them. So you really want to be uh, as least stressed stressed out as possible when you're going into your job interviews and exercising on a daily basis will help you do this. Exercising on a daily basis will also see yourself make some progress. One of the frustrating, hard things, difficult things with job search is that it's so hard to feel progress, especially if you're sending out CVs regularly, like so many people do, and you're not getting responses. How do you know what's working? How do you know that you're making progress? How can you, you can't tell unless you're getting any feedback from anybody. Whereas when you're, when you're exercising, you will day after day, if you keep following a, a routine, you will start to feel better. You'll start to notice that you're getting in better shape. You will start to feel progress. Even if you're just feeling progress in one part of your world will help you feel better in other parts of your world as well. Okay. So one thing, and this is something that people just, they don't do it. They, they spend eight hours a day sending out resumes, uh, uh, looking for, for jobs and job boards and so forth. And, and they ignore the other things that are so important. And this is something that you really should be scheduling time for every single day, even half an hour or an hour. It doesn't need to be complicated wherever you are. You could just go for a walk in the middle of the day, take a half an hour walk to just walk around, get a few kilometers of walking, aim for, I don't know, eight to 10,000 steps or something do that. Uh, or like I said earlier, you can go to a gym. All right. So we've covered three things so far. There's one more thing. <laughs> what is it? What is the fourth thing out of the four things that I promised you that you need to be doing every day on your job search? All right. So wait, a hint. Okay. We talked about company research. We talked about, uh, we talked about personal branding and we talked about the exercise. But when do you actually apply for jobs, right? Like I've been saying how people tend to spend hours and hours a day applying for jobs, sending residents, whatever. Well, when do you actually do that? Okay. So here, number four is the networking. So I already touched upon this very, very slightly, but I'm going to give it a bit of a twist here. When you're doing a job search, ideally, you should never submit a resume anywhere yourself. It should always be done by a third party. So if you are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, doing research and, and contacting people that you know, uh, then you can ask them to do that for you at, through the refer friends uh, scheme that I mentioned. Okay. However, you shouldn't stop there. You should be networking every day, ideally with at least one person that you don't know. Okay. And the, one person, I'm not talking about networking, networking with your friends, um, networking with a past colleague. That, that's okay. But you shouldn't only focus on that. You should really be aiming to network with people that you don't know people, uh, who are in your industry, people who you may be able to help in some way and who can in return help you somehow. And, and you really want to have a call at least once a day, just a quick call, 20 minutes, half an hour, kind of a virtual coffee with that person. Uh, and, and you should really aim to do this every day. Why is this important? Okay. Having a daily call like this. So you will feel less loneliness by job searching because every single day you'll be talking to someone face to face 
on a Zoom call, if not in the real world, meeting someone for coffee. That's ideal, actually. But we're still in some places. The pandemic is worse than others. Uh, you may not be able to do that. Some people may be hesitant about doing that. That's OK. You can propose meeting them over Skype or Zoom or whatever uh, video chat platform you want to use. But the point is, is you want to see someone face to face on a daily basis. So again, that will help uh, rid you uh, of the loneliness feelings that, that tend to come to job seekers on a day to day. Um, Another reason to do this every day, again, going back to what we mentioned personal branding, is the expertise aspect. By talking about your, your industry, by talking about what's going on in your industry, by helping someone else with your knowledge, you will continue to keep your self-confidence up, uh, keep your, your, your knowledge current, again, as you respond to questions people have for you. And the way that you want to reach out to people is you, you shouldn't always... You don't, the, the, the classic networking mistake that people make is reaching out to someone only when they need something. All right. So that's, that's what spammers do. Spammers reach out to people when they're looking for something. And most of the time you hopefully don't respond to them. And that's why people don't respond to many job seekers because recruiters, they get res resumes from people that just, they're really not looking for. And so what you should be doing, you should be coming to people with something to give them first, and that will make them want to reciprocate and give and help you in some way. Okay. So when I'm talking about looking for networking, uh, to do a networking call with people, uh, look for people, let's say on LinkedIn, uh, perhaps in the places you're hanging out when you're doing your personal branding in your, uh, social media groups, maybe it's a, another kind of local networking group that you're a member of, uh, reach out to people that you think you could help somehow. Okay. In your industry, again, it's gotta be rel relevant to what you do, but reach out to people who you think you could help. Perhaps they ask the question in the group and you say, to them, Hey, let's chat. I'd love to dive deeper on that question that you asked. I think I could really help you out with that. Um, and, and yes, people, people, people respond that and they'll, they'll want to hear from you because you're offering to help them. Right. And if you do help them, then usually they're going to want to be able to, again, reciprocate and say something, you know, uh, that was great. Um, um, maybe my, my company's hiring, maybe we could bring you on or my company isn't hiring, but I know someone who is, or even if they don't know someone who's hiring, just the fact that you help them, they're going to keep you in mind, at least for the next few days, it's possible that they could recommend you or refer you to someone else who is hiring if they see uh, um, uh, an opening, a job opportunity over the next few days, all right? Uh, but it's a great way to start a conversation. It's a great way to start a relationship, uh, a networking relationship with someone um, and hit the ground running because right away, again, you're helping them and you're seeing each other face to face, which even over Zoom is, is way different than just a, a text chat, okay? A text chat, you really don't know who you're talking with most of the time. It's hard to know. But when you see someone face to face, it's it's... I mean, how can they fake that, right? Uh, so you really, really want to do this. You want to aim to have one networking call every single day. If, well, the days that you're job searching, I should say. Uh, again, a short call. And this is the fourth thing that you should be doing every day of your job search, okay? So to recap, we talked about you got to be doing your cover research, research. That's the first thing you should be doing at the beginning of your job search chain of, of, uh, of steps, okay? Not waiting to the last second. Number two is personal branding. Every day you've got to be sharing your expertise. Yes, it overlaps a little bit with the with number four, the networking call, but you should be doing, you can be also doing, I also want you to be do, producing expert content somehow, whether it's on a forum, YouTube channel, blog, whatever, what have you. It could even just, just be a, a, on a Twitter account. Whatever it is, you've got to be putting, creating something, putting it out there, and hopefully getting engagement, getting responses from people, okay? Uh, the third thing is exercise. Again, you've got to be exercising every day. I'm not saying go and be, become a bodybuilder. I'm not saying become a champion athlete. That's not the point. Just you got to be doing something that will get your get your your body moving every day. Uh, hopefully, get you outside, get some sun, so you're not vitamin D deficient, especially in the winter. Um, um, but yeah, you wanna you wanna do some exercise every single day. By the way, there are lots of free YouTube workouts where you can just just look for follow me workout type of thing, and you'll see people offering workouts. You can just follow along at home. And fourth, you should be doing networking every day and specifically by using by doing a networking call where you're speaking face-to-face -face with people every day, okay? Now, I, I gave you four different things here. Uh, choose the order that works for you. Um, again, I find that a networking call, uh, it's usually good to schedule that when people are, are on a break or their lunch, like their lunch break or another break. So you're, you're not always, always gonna be able to schedule that at any, any hour of the day. Maybe there'll be a pattern there. Uh, but that's a good time to aim for if you're offering people. One thing that I like to do is you have to, you have websites like Calendly, c a l c a l e n d l y dot com, where you can create a free account, and then you can allow people to use that 
um, a, a, you'll have a link that you can send to them where they can then choose a moment in their schedule that fits into your schedule. So you avoid going back and forth trying to find a time that works. But that's for the networking call. Um, in terms of the, the other things, uh, the exercise, that may depend on what you, which kind of exercise you decide to do. Some people prefer to exercise first thing in the morning. Some people prefer to do it in the middle of the day. It wakes them up as they're starting to get a bit low on energy after lunchtime, for example. And some people like to do it at the end of the day. Whatever it is, pick a time that works for you. Uh, company research and personal branding, similarly. Um, when you're creating content, I find I like to create content in the morning and do more networking and emailing and stuff like that uh, later in the day. But some people, uh, they want to do the research in the morning and then do the uh, the more connecting with people in the second half of the day, whatever whatever works for you. So choose the routine that works for you. Okay. So those are my four things that you should be doing every single day of your job search. Uh, this applies to everybody and anybody who's job searching. It's not only for tech job seekers. Um, it really, it, 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 this is simple stuff. There, there really isn't a lot of excuse here. I'm, I'm not asking you to go and spend a lot of money. I'm not asking you to 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 become an expert on, I don't know, on YouTube or, or Twitter or something like that, uh, uh, how to become a uh, an influencer. No, 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 no. This is all simple stuff that you can start doing today, tomorrow, uh, but you should start doing it and you will start seeing results right away. Um, you will start to, you'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel better about your job search. You'll see yourself starting to help people. Um, you will start hearing from people who can refer you to jobs, if not actually hire you. And this will create a lot of positive uh, feeling and positive momentum that will shorten your job search drastically. So those are the four things that you should be doing every day. And um, yeah, I, I, if there are any questions, I'd, I'd love to take them. Otherwise, um, I guess this, is, this has been great. I've been really happy to talk to you. Uh, it's a great event. Any other? Do we have any questions? No, well, I don't see any questions. So let me just let me just dive a little bit deeper uh, on uh, on one on one point. Okay, going back to the company research. So how do you do company research? So again, so you start with the, the people. Looking for first degree, the people around you, you look at your, 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 you can look at your friends, you can look at your former colleagues, your bosses, the people that know you well. That's where you want to start first. The people who know you well, they're the people who are most likely to want to help you, the people who are most likely to be willing to refer you to someone else, right? That's the first degree of people that you should go to. Uh, and when it turn in terms of, again, looking for people who can refer you to companies that are relevant to you, okay? Um, once you, you've exhausted those people, so then you should start looking at other people who might be familiar with you. So if you have been doing your personal branding and your networking chats that I mentioned in as numbers two and three of the items you should be doing every day, well, then you can, in terms of those people, people that, that you uh, engage with you when you're doing your personal branding, people who ask you questions or, or you've, whose questions you've responded to on social media, um, you can look at those people as well, even if it hasn't, if it's people that you've responded to or, or engaged with in the past three months, for example, uh, that's still reason enough that you can reach out to them uh, and and uh, reach out to them if you see that they're working at a relevant company and, and offer to chat with them to learn more about their company or again, to dive deeper on something they may be dealing with in your industry that you can help them with. And that way, find out if they can refer you for their, their companies. Okay, so that's that's the second um, that's the the uh, the second degree of people that you can you can research people who you've had some sort of a, a contact with uh, work wise or or, or professionally uh, over the past few months. Okay, and once you've gone beyond that, well, at that point you're you're really you're out there, and so uh, you can start looking at if there are companies that you've discovered that you really want to work for, uh, but you don't know anybody there. Uh, perhaps you can look on, you can search on LinkedIn for people who used to work there um, and uh, and then reach out to them because you have something in common with them, such as you both went to the same uh, university or college, you both or you both are okay. from the same hometown, um, uh, or you're both members of the same association, whatever it is, that's the third degree of people that you should you should try to contact uh, about uh, about finding companies and ultimately jobs in your industry that they can, again, it apply for you internally so that you never have to apply directly for a job. This way, you're always reaching out to people who theoretically should be able to refer you internally uh, on their uh, uh, to their recruiters internally. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, Jakob. 
We have one question which I would like to then put it on the screen for sure. um, us to see. So the question is, I'm targeting startup uh, chat just past the seat. I usually mm -hmm. contact uh, the CEO as the here and uh, is no HR yet. Yeah. Is it a good strategy or would it be uh, better to contact the, the HR? Okay, so the, so I, I this is a this is a really good question because I, I I love the way that Emmy is showing that she sees that a company just got funded, which means they most of the time they're taking that money and they're using it to hire people. So that's a great time uh, to to hire to contact uh, uh, to try to contact the company, right? You know they're going to be hiring. You're anticipating a hire, so that's very smart already. Okay, now in terms of who you're going to contact there again. You want to go to the person that you have any relationship with, and so mm -hmm. if it's if if there's anyone there that you know, that's obvious. Go to the person that you know. If there's going back to the three degrees that I mentioned, if there's someone there that you have interacted with somehow in the past few months, then go to them because they may still remember you. And then if there's no one there that if there's no one there that you have a connection with, then at that point, it's a question again of saying, okay, is there someone that I have something in common with? Um, okay, that's the person you want to go to. And if if even that doesn't work. And you still think that you're great for this company? Well, then at that point, yes, you should reach out to the employees first uh, because they will be able to tell you how they were hired by this company, which will give you ideas about how you could be hired by that company. And again, they're more likely to refer you internally. It is possible if you see where the the CEO is 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 um is um very talkative on social media, um, you could try going up to the CEO at an event. Uh, not everyone likes that. Some people do. Uh, that's a bit of, there's a bit of a risk there, but I would typically try the employees before going to the CEO. Okay. Yeah. That was a really good tip. I, I think everybody should follow that because this is a lot of time, a question and a dilemma that whom to contact or who is the right person to, you know, contact to on the LinkedIn. Yeah. But that's a great uh, tip that you definitely have given. Uh, there's uh, one more question, um, right. which is what are the specific things we should target for getting jobs in Fantech uh, post Brexit uh, in the UK and EU countries? Okay, so sim you could take a similar tack to what Emmy was talking about, which is that you look for companies that uh, that just received funding. Okay, yeah. uh, that's that's something that they're going to be hiring, right? Uh, you yeah. can also in fintech specifically. So uh, you you know that with the separation with the with the Brexit separation, so there there are different kinds of issues being dealt with on both sides in the EU and in in, in the UK, especially in the UK. There's a there's a, a lot of mess there. Uh, if you have expertise that can help companies specifically with dealing with post Brexit, it's not clear if that's your question. If that's exactly what you mean. But if that's what, if that's what you're talking about, well then. You can look to see where the companies are talking about. Uh, let's say you look for employees on LinkedIn, uh, maybe sharing information about how their their companies are are struggling with with certain things. Or um, if a company, um, if you if they mentioned, for example, in a in an earnings call, they mentioned that they lost a lot of money due to Brexit happening. Then that means because they understand. I mean, they they they're having troubles dealing with it, right? So that's an opportunity as well. Uh, Again, that's for public companies. Uh, private companies are not going to talk about earnings calls like that. They're not going to talk about it openly. But that is a place that you can look to get to get ideas about which companies are going to need someone who can help them uh, post Brexit uh, when it comes to fintech. Cool. Thank you so much. So with this, I think we have to end since we are running out of the time. Um, thank you so much, Jakob, for your wonderful uh, talk. Thank you, and It was very, very inf informative, I must say. <laughs> Terrific. It's a pleasure to uh, to do this, and I hope that people get a lot of information out of it, especially whether it was today or in the future. Indeed, for sure. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. Have a patience to learn, um, and and I'm sure that you have a lot of learning tips uh, taking away from this uh, beautiful session. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you around.